Okay, good afternoon once again and welcome to your class in CPT3 Fundamentals of Crop Science. So for this video, we're going to talk about specialized management practices. And this would be our last meeting for the semester. So after the last three topics that we're going to talk about, um, I'm going to give you your final exam. So watch out for the posted videos and final exam. So when we speak of specialized management practices, these are actually the, the cultural practices and the advanced practices that, that can alter the growth and development of plants. And this include life management, wind protection, physical control of growth and development, and chemical control of plant growth and development. So for the light management, the, uh, this includes approaches such as regulation of light intensity or interception or light quality, we call as wavelength in the plant canopy. So there has been a lot of technologies available and has been studied and experimented using different uh, sources of light, colors of lights, and technology uh, in the lightning aspect that would enhance maximum growth potential of plants, especially in, in a uh, greenhouse and in an urban areas or, or controlled atmosphere. So we also can have regulation of light duration or darkness period on daily or duration basis. So in terms of light management, the, con the light control during light sensitive stages of a crop or nursery or seeding stages is very important because it's, it's the sensitive stage of the crop. We all, uh, the light control is also due to light requirement of crops. They can either be shade loving or sun loving crops. And we have known from our past learnings that when we say shade loving, plants these are plants which are uh, which thrives best or they grow well or maximum growth potential is achieved when it when the it is shady and this uh they they are not uh, exposed to full sunlight while on the other hand sun loving crabs love sunlight and they must be exposed to full sunlight in the field so note that shade tolerance which is related to low light compensation and air temperature in the crop canopy. So uh, there are two types of light management for those specific crops. We have the shade loving or shade tolerant crops versus the sun loving or sunlight tolerant crops. So shading imposed by in the shade uh, loving crops are done by building shading structures, of course, using polypropylene plastic or net, screen, wooden slot, plant leaves, etc., as roofing or shading materials. Or manipulation of plant spacing or density. So more dense or close planting in the monoculture could also um, increase shading, especially for, for garlic, for ins, for ins, no, not, yeah. For, for instance, for and also planting orientation, we have row planting at north south orientation will allow shading at particular time of the day. So uh, if you are if using your um what do you call that um if you have a actually what do you what do we call that if you have a compass and you you locate your um north and south orientation of uh, uh this is an example of a compass now if you have that in your uh in your in your application in your cell phone so you can uh, direct whether where is your north south in the field so um and even uh if you have the compass uh, application in your phone you can also not you can also um not only identify the the you can also identify the exact 
um, GPS location of your of your location and also the elevation as shown here. So um, like if I like this one, if I am pointing this phone this way, it is uh, 121 degrees um, southeast and with uh, 7 degree 26 and 7 north or 135 degree 49 and 28 east with 20 meter elevation in Tagum City Double Bay North. So this is just an example. So uh, and the last one, uh, we also have intercropping or you plant or plant a lot of different um, sizes or tall, medium, um, there are, or what you call multi-story crops for the shade tolerant crops will be planted below the taller crops, of course which are usually trees. Now for the sun loving or sunlight tolerant crops, uh, light intersection can be increased through pruning and training, uh, especially for mango. You cut the necessary branches for the trellis or structure for training. And uh, manipulation of plant spacing or density, of course, wider spacing to, to maintain optimum leaf area index at full canopy stage. For example, for mango, from it will grow even up to 100 years. So if you are looking into that, so the best planting distance for mango is actually 20 by 20. No? And with, of course, a regular pruning. And the manipulation of plant uh, spacing or density for wider spacing to maintain optimum leaf area and leaf at full canopy stage, as I have mentioned a while ago. And the planting orientation, again, row planting at the east-west. So as in, in um, opposite to north-south. So if you are on the north-south side, this is more shady compared to the sunny east-west orientation, which allows maximum light interception throughout the day. And the supplemental uh, light enclosed or semi-closed growing structure using artificial lights like the fluorescent lamps just like in the tissue culture go through. So another light management is the regulation of light uh, duration or darkness period on daily or duration basis. So light control during vegetative stage or when crests are mature for flowering will induce or delay flowering under natural sunshine duration or day length. So we have the so-called um, Long day plants and short day plants. So short day plants, well, the, like the like the um, some species of chrysanthemum, and we also have long day plants which needs a uh, longer day length. And short day plants like chrysanthemum needs um, shorter days, you know? and so they need a lot of night or or uh, on darkness. So light control is based on a photoperiodicity of a plant or a crop known as the critical day length in crops. So as I have mentioned, uh, 12, uh, in, in, in countries like Philippines where we are near on the, on the, in, in a tropical region where we are near in the equator, we have uh, definitely always 12 hours day and 12 hours night. So throughout the year and throughout the years, unlike for other countries which have, they have either 16 or 14 hours day a light, day length or um, more or less um, night length. So critical day length is plant will flower below short day or above long, or if they are long day, the critical day length. So for instance, the 12 hours or the 14 hours. And day neutral plants have no critical day length. So most of our crops uh, anyway are day neutral. You know? So critical day environments 
various root species of varieties. As I have said, there are some varieties of chrysanthemum which are short bay and there are also our long bay. So most of the long day plants are, we have the, um, baby's breath you know, flower example of the long day plants. So short, how do you shorten darkness period? So this is imposed by artificial lighting at particular duration and induces vegetative growth in short day plant like the chrysanthemum and aster interruption of the night period by four hours lighting using 100 watts bulb at 10 meter distance and 180 centimeter above the plant. Or you can also lengthen the darkness by covering plants with an opaque black cover not penetrated by light at particular duration which induces flowering in a short day plant like the polystipia. Flowers at, at um, more than 11 less than 11 hour day length covering the plants at 2 to 3 hours before sunset to impose a 13 hour day length will induce flowering. So more practical and economical to shorten day length once on clear days, effective photo period duration is one hour longer than the period between sunrise and sunset. So while shorten, shorter in plants don't under shade. So aside from the light and uh, management, we also have windbreaks or or windbreaks or shelter belt. It is a plant uh, in the plantation usually made of one or more rows or trees or shrubs planted around the edges of the fields and farms to provide shelter from the wind and to protect soil from erosion. So this reduces the cost of heating and cooling and saves energy as well. It provides habitat even for wildlife and in some regions of the trees are harvested as a wood products. So this is just a repetition of the last slide. So these are examples of wind breaks, no? different sizes of um, tall trees to protect the surrounding crops. So wind protection using wind break or shelter shuttle belt, um, the benefits derived from reduction of wind speed to desired levels by wind breaks, and the characteristic of a plant appropriate for wind break and other information. So this our plants or structure again is established around the farm to break the force of the wind and is practical and effective way to manage relatively strong winds which are about 40 to 50 km per hour. So the benefits are less damage to plant structure and processes such as photosynthesis and transpiration. And are less prone to disease infection and or entry points via the cuts or laceration. And it shows less soil and plant drying, um, evapotranspiration, more pollinating fertilization and fruit development, less drop, fruit drop, mechanical or stress related and direct or indirect effects on soil and crop. So, because even the wind can also alter the soil. Characteristic of this appropriate plan for wind breaks. So, this this are this crop should be adapted to soil and climate in the area and are fast growing. Crops not easily destroyed by strong winds and the canopy not too dense. And they must be importantly deep rooted system and resistant to drought and other traits in accordance with the crop. So uh, another way, another information are ideal condition using windbreaks, establishment of windbreaks, farm planted with animals and lower part of shelter belts provided with hedges should be denser than the middle of the upper parts. So the ideal condition in using windbreaks is 30 to 50% of wind must penetrate through the canopy protection for a distance of 20 times the height of the tree. Large area with a row green breaks of every 200 meter. And if it's too dense, turbulence on the protected slide side or leeward is sparse, lesser wind resistance. So a single row of trees with a height of 11 meter could also provide protection for horticultural trees against strong winds on the leeward side and about 50 meter on the wind wide side and on the hillside. So an impenetrable windbreak 
a protection of six to eight times its height is the best. So how to establish? You plan at right angles to the direction of the prevailing, prevailing winds in contour in sloping areas as buffer strip to minimize erosion or bank protection along rivers and creeks or use area between shelter belt and crop as a lane shaded on rooting zone. So you also plan, for, uh, plan in the farm, planted with annuals such as hedges as well and break. And lower part of shelter bells provided with hedges should be denser than the middle upper parts. Or a combination for shelter bells, maybe 65% shrub, 20% medium-sized trees, and 15% tall trees. So another important way is physical control of growth. Uh, we have the so-called low bark grafting method. This one, low bark grafting method, pruning, pinching, and training techniques using pop. This one, and rejuvenation using this one, girdling to induce flowering. Flowering. This one, and other shading treatment. So physical methods allow control of growth and development for functional or aesthetic reasons with high degree of precision through. So through uh, training, pruning, vernalization, flower and fruit protection, cropping, and gardening. So among this, um, we're going to talk about them one by one. Growth control is training in terms of shape, size, and spatial distinction. This will involve pruning. Of course, we know what it's pruning and provision for support, um, like putting poles beside it, bending and twisting, fastening of plant to supporting structure. So another way of training is also trellising. Plants to train the clump trellises using A-type, arbor or overhead, fence type, niffin system, T-type, and disalogma. So pruning is another judicial removal of plant part with a purpose. Uh, heading back to cut the terminal portion of a plant apical to induce development of the lateral buds uh, using auxin and apical dominance principle. And thinning out or completely removal of any number of branches and pinching of growing teeth allowing growth of lateral buds. So there are how, uh, also rules in pruning. First is prune as little as possible because removal of uh, of dead and drying or severely infected branches includes pruning and cutting of interlocking branches, limited pruning on trees and flowers on the terminal bud, such as in mango. So another rule is prune with a purpose or you control size, three size appropriate to execute, execute desired cultural practice in preparation for particle stress and limiting factors, and the body and thinning of flowers and fruits to control number of size and quality. So prune with also a purpose using cutting or interlocking branches. So limited pruning on trees that flowers on terminal buds. Example, again, mango. Development, uh, develop open framework like interception, carrying capacity, air circulation, others. By removing of weak branches, um, branches must be spread. Removal of inward, downward, and drooping branches. So control of general configuration applica applicable for aesthetic purposes, such as control of shape and miniaturization. So you can also make a plant miniature by pruning. Or rejuvenation of plants to overcome declining productivity, especially in older branches or older trees. So this is uh, very important in calamansi, for example. Now, you should always prune them because eventually they will just uh, die very quickly if they are not pruned well. Some branches are pruned every year for rejuvenation and top working total cutting of older trees to allow new branches or trunk to form. So I have already shown you the photos earlier on, on top pruning. Improvement is also for improvement of productivity. So removal of non-productive growth water sprouts and branches and removal of infected or infested or dry branches and rules in pruning uh, for the to delay flowering or you or, or the cutting back of terminal shoots in combination with watering and fertilizer application to induce vegetative growth 
So timing or pruning depends on vegetative growth rate and the plant part to impose the pruning effect. So generally, no pruning during flowering stage, of course. And vernalization are, are seeds which are subjected to cold treatment prior to germination to trigger flowering during the latter stage of the plant growth. So vernalization is usually used uh, or substituted uh, using uh, gibberic acid or, um, or GA. Flower and fruit protection, um, protection against environmental stress or pests and diseases. It's another um, control for, for pruning. Uh, I mean, not pruning, but protection of the flower and fruit. And we also have propping. This is very common in banana for heavy fruiting branches in durian and mango. Girdling is also the physical inter interruption to assimilate flow from the leaf to roots. So we have two types, scoring and ringing. So scoring is without removal of bark. So you just apply a metal no, to um, uh, around the bark or the trunk. And ringing with bark removal, as I have shown on the previous photo. So phytohormones are very important, or plant hormones, to control growth and development. So they are chemical messengers and are naturally occurring compounds that modulate development of different organs, such as the root shoot ratio, the photosynthetic capacity of leaves and number of flowers and fruits, and the size of stem in relation to loading the branches. So these are called plant growth regulators or organic compounds naturally occurring or synthetic other than nutrients that in small amount or macromole amounts may promote, inhibit, or quantitatively modify plant growth and development. So how? So we have here the phytohormones of plant hormones. So as I have said, they are naturally occurring, and but then uh, when you apply them synthetically, they are available in synthetic forms. So we have the indoloxin. There are even um, <coughs> nine variants or compounds of it and it's are usually growth promoter with uh, also gibberlins about 125 even more 200 more that's our growth promoter together with 14 cytokines three of cystic acid and there's only one type of ethylene <laughs> and this are uh, the only growth inhibitor he's here is the abscisic acid and growth promoter as well as inhibitor is ethylene. So these hormones have different effects actually depending on the crops. Like for example, no, ethylene can be used as flower enhancing for, for pomelo and also uh, GA can also be a flower enhancer or ethylene can be inhibitor as well for, for, uh, for ripening. So, at cellular level, they uh, these hormones actually uh, manipulates or controls cell division, elongation, and differentiation. And in the tissue organ or organism level, they are quantitative aspect of development, differentiation, and organization, or the formation of three-dimensional structures. Um, in physiological processes, they increase in size, the size of cells, tissues, organs, and they are responsible for uh, regulation of germination and flowering. And they transport photosynthetic products and also dormancy, especially the abscisic acid. More than one growth regulator is involved in the control of physiological process, but only one tends to dominate the control process. So these uh, are being used for a, a a lot of applications that includes promotion of rooting and development of plant parts and uh, propagation and the very uh, and, and the very uh, famous fruit that is the ana or alpha naphthalene acetic acid it's an oxid second is the initiation or termination of seed dormancy induction of retardation of senescence for um for ga or or oxin as also, at cytokine, promotion or delay of flowering, um, enhancement of or prevention of leaf, flower, or fruit depth, and the control of fruit set and development, 
and culture of plant or organ size. And a lot more for the magnification of flora sex expression, like for ethylene and GA. Control of food set and development, increasing plant resistance to pests and environmental stresses, water temperature, and air pollution. Prevention or delay of post harvest spoilage for ethylene and regulation of plant or fruit composition, and enhancement of mineral uptake, especially for cytokine. So, a lot more uh, are change in timing of crop development, enhancement of coloration of leaves and flowers and fruits for cytokine, and also an enhancement of accumulation of plant products, enhancement of latex flow, papaya, rubber, and oleoresin, pine, and other conifers, and the modification of canopy architecture trees. So, uh, these are the plant growth regulators once again. Oxin for cell elongation, gibberellins for cell elongation and cell division, which overall in growth, and cytokine for cell division and also inhibit senescence. Oxytic acid for the absorption of leaves and fruits and dormancy induction of buds and seeds. And lastly, ethylene to promote senescence, epinasty, and fruit ripening. So epinasty is the bending of the or of the um, stem. So in agriculture, oxygens are used as rooting for cuttings, propagation, greenhouse and nursery crops, like a uh, hormodine, rutone, commercial press of 2,4-D. And but they can also be as also as an herbicide using high concentration of 24 d which are uh, used for dicots, which are sensitive, and well, the monocots are less sensitive, and these are used in weed control in cereals. So we also have the very famous Agent Orange, which has a, a 1 is 1 ratio of 24 d and 245 d which are used to defoliate trees during the Vietnam War, because um, Vietnam is used to, to camouflage in uh, because if you've been to Vietnam, it's a really very green country with a lot of trees around. So they used to defoliate this tree so they can see the Vietnam soldiers. And prevent abscission of leaves and fruit in other leaves or ripe fruit, endogenous production of IAA will stop and replace exogenous naphthalene acetic acid and also for chemical thinning with differential sensitivity and developing fruit high concentration ng, in of naacosis abscission and induction ng ethylene synthesis and also for tissue culture propagation oxen is used for rooting and cytokine cytokine for shoots an equal ratio will uh, produce callus formation and promote flowering and fruiting and for also for sex determination, fruit development, and apical dominance. So when we say apical dominance, it's just um, the top of the tree goes uh, grow, grow all the way. So induction, induction of axillary buds for those in chrysanthemum, micropropagation and shoot proliferation na tissue culture are, are some of the uses na cytokine. So this is an example of the interaction of cytokine and oxygen in tobacco, callus, or undifferentiated plant cells tissue. So this involves organogenesis and cytokines and oxygen affect organogenesis. So with high cytokine over oxygen, it's from favors formation of shoots, while low cytokine over oxygen favors formation of roots. So next is the gibberellins which are uh, uh, used in agriculture for seedless grapes, known as Thomson, uh, and also for parthenocarpic fruit, you know, without seeds. So also for seed germination in malting barley and precocious germination, and male flower production of monoecious and dioecious plants. So gibberellins are for male flower production. Chini requirement for azaleas, biennials, and Biennial bearing. So this is to compare GA uh, without GA and with GA. So this is wild radish processing and bolting. So with the use of GA, it will only take one year. No, then we are waiting for two years. 
And we also have um, another one for the second year. Uh, you can see the a flower biennial. So it takes two years for it to rosette. And the mobilization ng reserves. So for germination, then antibiotic acid. For ethylene, it's, uh, we have the so-called ethophone, which breaks down to a form of ethylene. And these are used for fruit ripening of the following crops, like tomato, banana, and more. Pick and ripe and firm for shipping. And they are sprayed in store to ripen and color development and softening. And usually field spray for uniform uniform and synchronous ripening for cutting tomatoes and mechanical harvest. So also for flower development from bromelias, pineapple, banana, and uniform development of inflorescence. And sex expression for female flowers and cuter beads, which is opposite to G8. And the greening of citrus like orange, lemon, and grapefruit, which break down chlorophyll and leaves carotenoids. So it's also used for mechanical harvesting that uh, induce formation of this abscission zone and stimulate fruit drop like in cherries, walnuts, and pennants. And possible shelf life, which blocks ethylene synthesis um, or silver thiosulfate and delays senescence for termination. So there are also synthetic growth retardants like, like diaminoside, which retard growth and stimulate flowering in chrysanthemum and azaleas, and also chemical pruning for apple and enhanced size of color. We also have glomer quad uh, to promote branching of poinsettia, geraniums, and bougainvillea and prevent lodging of wheat. And also, lastly, we have ansimidol and paclobutrazole. So ansimidol is for the high control lung bulb to produce plants and like in lily and tulip, and paclobutrazole for micropropagation stimulus rooting and in this flowering of mango citrus and others. So if you have questions on the, this topic, so just um, comment on, in the chat box and on the posted video. So I'm going to see you again on the next video for, for our final semester. So thank you for listening and see you again.